Oh yeah, so Kirby, uh, we are now with the Gooners. All right, I'm, I'm no, starting. Not. I'm starting to record now. So we are streaming and okay. recording now. So let's do it. You didn't get all that great goon talk. In the <laughs> oh yeah, so so we're the Gooners. Okay. Um, no. And we just entered the Goon Caves. Okay. No. And we have to rescue our the inspiration. Uh, goblin. See, I told you, just just. And we have to rescue our goblin because he got captured. I'm not sharing my video. There we go. There What's go. up, boys? All right. All right. Y'all let me know if my internet gets significantly worse at all. Okay. So uh, let me launch the Roll20 campaign while I recap this. So last session, they did the heist on the museum. Their plan was to use Kirby's broken cart and two stolen carts um, to cause an explosion that broke through the small windows on the second floor of the museum in the cafe. Um, and then Petri went in with the cleaning crew, managed to get his hands on the stone, and he ran out through that hole in the cafe window. In the process, Inchi's three hired goons uh, did engage with a security guard and kill him. Uh, but by killing him, they were able to secure Destry's escape route. All right, the roll 20 is active. I need to get my mouse. Still no word on Vinny? Uh, I, I DM'd him. Nope. Oh. Uh, I even added him in the chat. Uh, so... Fair I'm just going to go the route mm -hmm. of one of two things happened. And I That's will DM fine. you what they could be, because they aren't necessarily something the stream need to know. Fair enough. That's fine. Uh, just tell them that we missed them. Okay. So they successfully pulled off the heist. Um, trying to think here. In the process of the heist, Destry was not seen. Um, nobody else was seen. The one security guard that saw everybody was killed by the goons. Uh, but in an effort to help Destry, Inshi ran through the front door while a bunch of guards were there and yelled something. So he was seen, and he was also seen by Alda Arkin. Uh, Inshi, attempting to run away from these guards, found an entrance into the basement of the museum. While down there, he found a stash of 25 gold coins and also found 20 pounds of uh, uncut gems <clears throat> and a plus one sword. While he was admiring his big dagger, a box next to him came to life. It was a mimic. It attacked him and killed him in one shot. Or it didn't kill him, but it put him in the death saves in one shot. Then she barely made three successful saving throws, and he was alive. But at that point, he was captured by Alda Arkin and her bodyguard, a human-sized doll called Marigold that has the stats of a scarecrow. Scare um, Kirby, your part was sacrificed as a part of this heist. Uh, the crew escaped in a different cart, but abandoned it and escaped into the sewers with the Merkmeyer Stone. Inshi is currently unconscious, uh, being held captive by Alda's doll, and everybody else, including the three hired goons from the Thieves' Guild, are in the sewers trying to make their way back to Dr. Cassie Daniels that they can uh, neutralize the stone. Uh, the stone, by the way, as soon as Destry touched it, started vibrating and cracking. Uh, it currently has one big crack all across it. Uh, does anyone have any questions about last session? Uh, not me. Uh, yeah. What's up? Why can't we be called the Gooners? Uh, I get a mulligan on the crew name. 
I might get more than one. I might get more than one, depending on how you annoy me. <laughs> depending on, like, if you tried to do, like, the Goonettes, or the Goon Trio, or something like that. Okay, continue. Oh, that was it. <laughs> All right. So, starting the session, Kirby, since you weren't here last time, um, we will start with... Uh, let's see here. Um, Destry. And the goons. Are in the sewers. Sorry, guys, I didn't load up the map beforehand. How dare you? I know. I wasn't expecting to work all day today. I thought we were going to be off at noon. And you're blaming work for your 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 uh, incompetence. Okay, your mulligan's it's gone. It's their you're fault. Their no. <laughs> so I simply will will not acknowledge it in game. In my reality, you're wrong. Exactly. Okay, so they escaped into the sewers um at some point. Um, Y'all are in the sea ward. We'll say that y'all are right here, underneath the streets. I'm going to ping everybody to call your attention to it. Okay. Um, Kirby. Um, we'll say... I don't know. How do you feel about your cart being destroyed, man? He would feel... Not betrayed, but like he's like blank, like he doesn't know what he's gonna do. He, he, he barely paid it off, you know. He's yeah, you didn't even get to really off. drive it, you had to drag it everywhere. Yeah, he just dragged it around, but more so like a lost, confused, like, oh man, I'm I didn't even pay for it. Like, what am I gonna say? kind of thing. He's not mad it got lost okay. in the, in okay. the scuffle, he's more so like worried. Okay, so y'all are walking in the sewers. You're kind of lagging behind, but you have a torch here, you know, keeping the light behind everybody, bringing up the rear. In front of you is Destry and Blinken, uh, the human and the gnome. Uh, and they are uh, whispering to each other. Uh, guys, how would y'all be feeling about breaking Kirby's cart? We'll say that Kirby was keeping watch uh, the whole time, so he didn't exactly know what was going on. Um, well, I mean, but I won't, what I won't tell him won't hurt him. I mean, um, I, I think for me, for, uh, I'm, uh, I, I, I am kind of hurt because, um, I, I, I didn't want to destroy it, but then we had, like, really no good plans to do it type of thing. Yeah. So it's like, um, I think the outcome was necessary, but, you know, sacrifices had to be made. <laughs> um, and, like, it's kind of a dire need situation anyway, if this, you know, thing is truly Eldritch Horror a you know, birth embryo thing that has to be done. Okay. And then the three goons are in front of you. Uh, goon 1, Goon 2, and Goon 3. That's how they introduce themselves. They didn't give you their real names. Um, one is angry, uh, two is sad, and three is... I forget what I said for him. Kind of nonchalant, I guess. Um, and they are whispering amongst themselves and looking back at y'all. Important question, who is holding the Merkmeyer stone? Um I think technically Destry. Wow. 
one of y'all has to be holding it. Sorry, I was talking to my brother. Are you asking about the egg? Yeah, who's holding the Merkmeyer Me. egg? Okay, I so haven't you're still holding it. it? Yeah, I haven't let All right, go. roll a d12. A d12. Twelve. That's oh, good, 12. right? Yeah. That's good, right? Yeah, yeah everybody. Uh, not only is uh, one of the goons up front holding a torch and Kurt and uh, Huel in the back holding a torch, but Destry himself has started slightly glowing. And a shimmery film covers you. For the next uh, minute, you have plus two to AC. That's not necessarily a good thing, seeing how we're trying to hide from people. I mean, no. Y'all can put the torches out if you want. <laughs> but you said I'm gl gl gleaming, so I'm shiny. You're gleaming. Yeah. But you notice that holding this egg, the effect it has over you changes, like, once every minute or so. Um, I would probably take to get, you know, just situated as as we can. Yeah. So, uh, so let's uh, skittle skedaddle and get to the professor. Cool. As uh, y'all are walking east along the sewer lines, um, you're kind of relying on the goons. Uh, they're part of their initiates into the thieves guild, so they're kind of familiar with uh, how the sewers work, and they can read some strange markings in chalk that come along every once in a while on the walls of the sewer. Uh, as best you can tell, y'all are heading east uh, through the sea ward. Uh, you know that Dr. Daniels is, uh, she lives on top of a bar uh, in the sea ward. It's right on the edge of the north ward. Uh, so y'all are just about five blocks away from that. As y'all are walking along, Fuel. You're thinking about your car. You saw it get blown up. Uh, you didn't know what to do. Something had to be done to get the job done. Uh, but in the end, it was sacrifice. And you just feel bad about that. And you remember that salesman, the used cart salesman who sold it to you, who made you all these big promises about how good and reliable and how good of a deal he was giving you. You know, he let you buy this on credit. All you had to do was shake his hand and sign a big contract. Um, and he already knew your name and he had the contract set up and everything, it was great. Uh, he was so easy to get along with, so easy to make a deal with. And you feel this hand, this comforting hand on your shoulder and you hear a voice and it says, Huel, Huel my boy, I thought you were going to be a bright boy, the best boy, something to show Waterdeep uh, what we could be. And here you are already losing your investments. And I tell myself, what is that? What is to become of this? Huel, the used cart salesman, is hanging onto your shoulder and just walking beside you. And he's hunched down low so that he can walk with you while turning to look at you. And he's whispering this in your ear. What do you say? He's got like his eyes closed, but he's like looking up and he's walking. And he's like, you know, it was, it was an honest mistake, you know? Stuff happens on the well, job. I didn't mean for it to happen. Well, that's the thing about this city, boy. Someone's misfortune is someone else's opportunity. And Blinken and Destry, you hear someone whispering behind you. And Destry, you can swear that voice sounds familiar. Sounds familiar. <sighs> is the voice Sorry, talking guys. to me? No, hold up. I wasn't expecting. I'm just out of breath because I worked all day. Yeah, dude. Take take a breather. Yeah. Let me blow my nose real quick. <laughs> you know, Skits, we got to get him off the corner. He's working too hard. Uh, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. 
Did that work? Did that save pop up there? Uh, yeah. I see Charisma it. Charisma save? Did you roll something? Yeah, yeah. I have my sheet set up in another the D and D Beyond, so I'll just have some company. Oh, okay. Can you push it to roll twenty from D D and D Beyond? This is a way, but I can't. But I could just use my sheet from the other <laughs> website. Yeah, there, like I just, there's like an extension that you could. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Um. So that voice uh is whispering to you, Huel, and it's not in your head. He's whispering to your ear. He's making like real noise. He's really there, just bent over and talking to you. His feet are splashing in the sewer water. Destry, it's not whispering to you. It's whispered to you many times throughout your whole life. But right now, it's not whispering to you. It's just oh. whispering in the same area as you. Huel, you hear in your ear, and you see this man say, You know, Huel, it's your first time, and I understand. So I'll tell you what. We can have an ongoing thing where no matter what happens to your cart, I'll bring it back in the same condition it was in. All you have to do is just a little tiny deal. It's going to be the best deal of your life, the best deal you ever made. Just every time I do it, we're going to double the price of the gold. What do you say? Two gold coins to start off with. And he extends his hand. Here he'll, like open, he'll open his eyes and kind of like look around. Yeah, he'll take the deal. He'll shake his hand. No, don't take the deal. Don't take the deal. <laughs> He said he shook his hand. Destry, uh, Huel, he's been walking right beside you. He's really there. Yeah, I'm I'm also, like, just in front of you. Don't take the deal. Don't do it. So, no, Destry, as you turn around, you see your patron. You just know him as Avi, the Avatar. Uh, And he is currently shaking hands with your new friend, Huel. And Huel... You know in your heart of hearts, he, Huel, you know in your heart of hearts that your cart is safe and sound back in its broken condition at the Yawning Portal with its brand new paint job. And he says, you know, that's something about me. That's something I really got to say about myself and that everyone says about me. I always make a good deal. Destry, hey, your uncle, he would like to see you. You don't come yeah, out enough. No, it's not good. no. 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 We're not on business no, right now. We, we'll talk later. This isn't really like, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just delivering a message. And frankly, I'm being a lot more nice about it than he's going to be. But I can go. And he turns around. He doesn't need to know anything. <laughs> okay. He just turns around and he starts walking away into the darkness and he starts humming a little tune as he walks. He's not a bad. He's not a bad guy. And he's a very he's bad really guy. He's really nice. He's a very bad guy. Don't make any more deals. Stop that. <laughs> okay. Keep that in mind. No, no, no! Don't keep in mind. Just don't. You know, you know that little voice in your head that says. When it shows up and goes, hey, you should make it. No. No. Say no to the voice. I I got you. Uh, Blinken, uh, this weird, like, gangly man in, like, a suit jacket and a tie and a top hat and, like, a mustache, pencil mustache going across his face, uh, just kind of shook your friend's hand and then delivered a message to Destry and walked away. Uh, do you say anything about that? Um, I'll, I'll take note of it, and I'm just gonna, like, probably not say anything. I, I won't say anything. I just obviously witnessed the whatever happened, and just kind of, you know, if, if I recognize him again, I'm gonna avoid him type of thing. Yeah, yeah. He seemed like you've seen his kind before. Like you can just tell by the way he walks. He probably trades stocks. 
Oh god. That's an understatement. <laughs> um, the guild system has like a stock system, and nobles and guild masters can buy into it to varying degrees. Um, that's a that's a real thing. That's like a Victorian England thing. All right. Um, Sean, are you available to talk? All right. So Sean, um, in she stabilized about an hour ago. So you get to roll a short rest because you've been unconscious this whole time. Yeah, I do. I believe that's just one of your constitution die plus something that's different for every race. Yeah, your hit die. Just roll one of those. And add your constitution. Okay, so I got an eight on the hit die. All right. So you've been unconscious for a while, um, and you regain eight hit points. With that, Wait, do I all you... Okay. What? Do I also roll Constitution? No, you would just add your Constitution modifier, which already happened. It's that plus two there. Yeah. So gotcha. you rolled a okay. six plus two, man. You got the highest you could get. That's really good. I was expecting you to get like a three or four. Okay. So you come to with a little burst of energy. Um, <clears throat> and you can tell that you are in something that is floating. You feel the weight shift back and forth. Uh, you come to very alert. You notice that immediately. You can also tell that there is a bag over your head and your hands are tied. And you can hear this professional, uh, high-class uh, voice uh, say, Oh, everything went wrong. Everything went so wrong. I, can y'all hear me when I whisper? Mm-hmm. Okay. She oh, says, kind of. I, okay, I'll just talk normally. She says, oh, no, everything went wrong. Everything went so wrong. One more day and it would have been enough gold to last years. Oh. Mm. Ah. Okay. And she walks over to you, and she, and she picks you up, and then she slams you back down into the floor. She says, wake up, goblin. Uh, the, the light. Do, the she, light. Uh, there's no light. What? <laughs> hmm? He says, oh no, darling, there's only darkness for you here. And you feel the point of something sharp pressed against uh, your, your like throat tube. What's that called? Esophagus. Something pointy and sharp. And she says, where is my Muckmire stone? What? Uh, uh, I don't know, lady. There's poking me. Get it off. Um. Okay, and she says, "Um, listen, here, you know nothing of what you've stepped in. I have. Oh, you came at the worst possible time." All it had to do was go right for one more day, but now you've caught me in the worst position, where both the castle enters will be breathing down my neck about a break-in, and Xanatha will be breathing down my neck about missing proceeds. You do not know the hells you are about to unleash upon the streets and sewers of Waterdeep. Tell me where the Merkmire Stone is, I can solve everybody's problems. I, 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 what, what's a Mark Meyer? What's a, what's a Castellator? Uh, is it, is, is Xanathar? I've ne heard none of this. Uh, please, I'm innocent. And I guess, guess I'll be a deception. Pulls the bag off, off your head. Oh, yeah, go ahead and make a deception.
and she doesn't snitch? Never has. Fair enough. Ooh, 18 deception. Very nice. Um, okay. So, um, in she, she pulls the bag off your head, and there is a small candle burning in this very small room on what you feel is a very small boat, probably just parked indistinctly somewhere in the dock ward of Waterdeep. You've walked those streets before. There's hundreds and hundreds of these things that fishermen go out on every day to try to catch a dozen or more pounds of fish to bring back to the market. Um, you can smell like the smell of the sea and salt and bird shit and rotting fish. You can smell blood and you can see faintly this woman in a fancy black dress. And you can see even more faintly this strange human figure that almost looks like a very big doll standing in the corner. And it turns its head to you when the bag comes off. And you see this woman in this elegant black dress is holding your purple bandana, the bandana that represents your part of the Xanathar Guild, that has this yellow gold pattern of an, of an eye, uh, of a big eye on it. And she says, well, I know you know who Xanathar is, whatever else she may or may not. So, start talking. I also know... You were at the museum earlier today. You came in with a no. And, um, uh... You came in with a gnome and a halfling. Someone pointed you out to me earlier today as ruffians that I had let in. And I guessed that they were correct. I will have to thank them. I don't know. I, I was begging everybody to let me in. I want to see that fancy museum of yours, and I, I don't know. I didn't focus on whoever let me in. Sue me, okay. lady. Says, oh, if only, if only we could do that. Okay. Um, and she makes a head motion towards Marigold, says, grab him. And Marigold steps forward, and this big uh, human-sized doll flaunts forward to you and just grabs you silently, no real, like, noise other than the motion of, like, its canvas and stick uh, figurine uh, grabbing you. And it starts pulling you and dragging you outside, and it throws oh, you the into the ice-cold water. Inchi, what's your constitution score? Uh, my constitution, I believe, is two. Two? All right. So I'm looking at some unofficial rules for drowning here. It says that a character can hold its breath for a number of minutes equal to one plus its constitution mo modifier. So you can hold your breath for three minutes. We will come back to you in a minute. Uh, Everybody sure. else... Y'all are in the sewers. What are y'all doing right now? Uh, the goons are leading you towards uh, the area that, you know, Dr. Cassie Daniels' home is at. Um, I'll probably say something. I, I'm just going to go drop the shit off, and then we can worry about finding... finding uh, is it kimchi or imchi? Inchi. Inchi, yeah. All right, so y'all are walking. Uh, the goons tell you that they're about halfway there, and then they come to a fork in the road that goes left, right, and forward, and y'all don't know the way to go. And they turn around and they say to you, so we've been talking amongst ourselves here, and we think that we have overperformed, to put it kindly. So we'd like a little bit more from you in terms of payment.
uh, this is the angry one who was uh, snorting drugs earlier. To make it actually relevant to D&D, he was uh, sniffing silkroot powder. I see. You... Okay. Okay. I, I respect that. Knowing what you're worth, that is a great thing for a person to have. Knowing exactly what they're worth. Now, you see, we can only pay you once we get there. We spent what we had prepping for it. So, we have to get there before we can pay you. But, keep that in mind. Because not only are we going to put in a good word for you, we're going to make sure you get tipped extra from them. And I'm going to ready in action if he uh, does anything stupid. I'm going to Eldritch Blast him in the face. Okay, so you're readying in action, so you're not rolling a persuasion or deception check. No. Uh, he's I'm gonna saying try... what I'm saying. Okay. He's going to try to push it a bit. And he says, I'll tell you what. I'm looking at your clothes here, and I think that those alone, Mr. Nobleman, are going to be worth than the nine gold that we're getting from you for this job. So how about you strip naked, you give us that fancy briefcase of holding Yuse was talking about earlier, and any gold you got on you, and we'll be on our way. Because we don't want to go back to Xanathar Guild and have to report to them what's been going on. You guys abandoned one of his men to get captured. I heard you say that this is more important than that. I mean, if you want to let you this thing want. hatch and kill all of us, I mean, I guess. Hey. <laughs> yeah, Pretty sorry. Fair. Different medication. It's uh, not playing nice with the stomach. <laughs> oh, no. Vinny. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you know, what he said, if, um... I mean, if everyone dying is worth, uh, nine gold to you, I mean... Oh, not even. I Fair think enough. I spent maybe five gold on these clothes. And that's after getting it tailored. <laughs> and I'm just gonna sigh real loudly and just kind of draw my bow just in case something stupid's gonna happen. Also, can we at least let him get changed into something once we're there if you're taking his clothes? I don't want to stare at man-ass all day. The sewers are bad enough as it is. Um, I don't know. I see... work out. I got a nice bum. Okay. <laughs> y'all see the sad one that talked to Blinken a lot lean over and say, man, it's weird stuff happens around these guys. I don't want to be around them anymore. Just kill them and take everything. And with that, I fire at the angry one. The fact that killing was even put on the table. I'm shouting he's coming right for us as soon as he says that. Self-defense! Alright, we're gonna go to a random battle map here. Y'all were walking east. Let's do it like that. They're coming straight for us. And I'll, I'll, you know, once this this attack's going on, I'll, I'll talk to the bad guy and be like, you know, we could have went to that gnome place that I was talking about. We could have some coffee and all this shit, and this shit happens, huh? You little shit. Okay. Yeah, if I didn't die before that happened, man. Look, asshole. No, we were trying to die because of your stupidity. Yes. I think I'm gonna live large for a while. Well, that's just sad, and I emphasize sad. Like, clack goes the Eldritch Flap. <laughs> okay. All right, yeah, everybody kind of readied in action here, so. Vinny, can you see your token? Can everybody yep. see their tokens? Uh, yeah. Fantastic. Uh, mate, yes. Oh, God, and their goblins, too. Oh, God, they've they, been goblins the whole time. Oh, no. They have it coming. They have it coming. Yeah, we'll go. I think I said last time that they were like humans, but yeah, they're just goblin thugs. I'll be using the thugs for them at the very least. Uh, one in the middle <clears throat> is angry. I have them labeled as goons. <laughs> uh, blue one is the sad one. Purple one is the normal one. Um, Destry, you ready your action first, so fire off that Eldritch Blast. 
Okay, so... I don't think the, these tokens that because I had them for the carts mostly, but I'll mm -hmm. keep track of everything. So that's a that's a sixteen. Ah oh, man, you didn't hit this common thug. Yeah, you hit him. That's seven. And I'm purposely like aiming for his face. <laughs> Or it's just like, you're talking shit, you're getting hit. <laughs> All right, Goodbye, so eyebrows. Against him. Um, Vinny, I believe you ready in action too, right? No. I simply shouted he's coming right for us as soon as he mentions killing. God damn it. Oh, okay. Blinken, you uh, ready in action, right? Yeah, I did. All right, go ahead and fire it off. So... Yeah, I, I, I'm ready to draw the bow and fire. That hits. Seven damage. I was going to shoot it at the... Um... Angry guy as well. Oh, here we go. I got thug tokens. Bam. All right. How much damage did you do? Seven? Uh, nice. seven. Yeah. All right. So immediately that guy that was talking all that shit looks very much worse for wear. The angry one in the front. I'm also going to change their health. Their health is way too high. I'm not going to make that mistake again. Just a second. Okay. All right. Now everybody roll initiative. What do you mean roll initiative? We got the first hit. We win. Sun Tzu said so. No. All right. We're starting them out with 20 HP each. Oh, uh. There we go. For some reason, it didn't fucking register that I did it what? on my end. Why is Destry is the only one that goes in automatically? Because you have to select your token. Oh, okay. That's why I rolled it twice. By accident. One, two, four, Vinny... Rolled a 14. How do you make the thugs roll that shit? There we go. Okay. So it's going to be Blinken, the thugs, Destry, what did you roll? Uh, initially a 15. 14. 15. Yeah, 15 was the first roll. Okay.
Okay. All right, I got it. So, Blinken, you're going to go first. Go ahead and roll your first attack. Off again to the angry guy. All right, that hits. Eight damage. Angry guy is now a dead guy. And he goes, oh. And like when I kill him, I'm like, we could have been best friends to the sad guy while I'm looking at him, aiming at him for the next attack. Oh, shit. The sad guy like steps back. He looks concerned. Uh, and he goes, uh, oh, oh, man. This is bad. This is bad, man. Come one, come all to this tragic affair. And the other guy, the neutral guy, steps up and goes, You, you killed my brother. Prepare to die. And he pulls out a dagger. No latte for you. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, well, it's we, now... we might have killed your, 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 your brother, but I am an ego Montoya, and you killed my brother. Okay, father. calm down. Okay. Oh, what? I'm sorry. He has a mace. Oh, shit. I don't think he should have rolled oh. twice. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm good. Me too. I, maybe I double-clicked it? Yeah, what the fuck? Still rolled it twice? It's that automatic advantage thing. Yeah, right? that's in that. that. Um, you can turn that off. You can turn it off. Yeah, it's in the cogwheel thing on the top right, I think, yeah. right? Yeah, it is. Right, under dice options? Uh, cogwheel, uh, where is it? I put it in the, uh, the game chat the other day. Or like yeah, last time I, I remember played. that. Yeah. Let me just find it, and That's I'll just so re-add everyone weird. in it. Well, which one's in chat first? Okay, uh, the 22 you... registered first. Yeah, usually roll the, like, whatever comes up first as the first roll, and then the second as the additional. I'll look at it later when there's some talking going on. Um, so he is going to run up to Huel, and he attacks with that 22. Huel, does that hit you? Yes. It does. I, I, I surely hope so. <laughs> now I would need to roll damage, right? But it doesn't give me that option. All right, it's 1d6 plus 2 regardless. So 3 damage to you, Huel. All right, the sad one's going to go next, and he is attacking uh, Blinken. You can see that he's uh, aiming at you, uh, and then he changes, and he's now aiming at Huel. Yeah. And he got an eight for that first one. Does that hit? Eight? Um, eight. No? Okay, then it sails over your shoulder. That is their turn. Next in the order is Destry. Destry, what would you like to do? Uh... Cool. I'm going to, uh... The one who just rushed my little halfling friend here? Yeah. Gonna Eldritch Flap him. I'll just blap him? Blast him. Blap him. Yeah, I'm just gonna yes. like, slap him in the face with it. Yeah, 25 hits. Uh, that's 10. God damn. 
That's half of his ult. Keep in mind, you guys can stop whenever you wish. We're just retaliating in self-defense. Coming right for us, as I scream it real loud. He's coming straight for us, <laughs> and I, uh, ready to attack again. <laughs> um, can you attack twice? No, like, uh, okay. oh, they're coming, they're coming straight for us again? Oh, no, prepares to attack again. All right, Vinny, it is your turn. All right. I'm gonna... Oh, full behind here, but like, oh god, he's got a weapon. Look, aim for the throat. And <laughs> guidance on whoever's in front of me. <laughs> that would be Huel. Well, he gets guidance. Next. Yeah. Huel is a, a halfling. He was standing watch uh, last time, because he wasn't here. He was uh, at a wedding. He was having fun. He was at the pre-wedding. Oh, at the pre-wedding. Yeah, because this even, is literally the day That's even more exclusive the than the wedding. Damn. Yeah. I wasn't even Getting invited into all the best one. parties. Oh, shit. He was a VIP. Yeah, I was mad. I was going to throw All right. Him. Oh, yeah. We're back around to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got to send Mike that song. Anyways, um, <laughs> I, um, I'm going to go ahead and aim at Sad Boy and, like... Uh, you know, first I'll, I'll, I'll give him a chance that you, you can run away now or I'm going to shoot you. And I sure want to share a latte with you. Um, okay, he'll decide that on his turn. Is that going to be your whole turn? You yeah. You can make a roll for that. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, I'll, I'll do, I guess, persuasion. Twenty-three. All right, uh, uh, and he starts uh, backing up and backing up, and then he starts running away, and he is going to. Uh, come on, roll twenty, be snappy. Roll a deck save. He got a 12, so he almost trips over a big uh, hole that leads down, uh, just straight down, uh, but he manages to catch his footing, uh, and he keeps on running uh, away and out of combat. Okay. Um, next, it is the remaining thug's turn. He is going to... Uh, attack Huel again. Even though I don't... D Huel, did you even attack his brother? No. <laughs> you were just right in front of him. Alright, he rolled a 12. Does that hit? That hits for... yeah. I don't understand how it... Clicking it once rolls the attack, but it gives you no follow up. Uh, so when oh, you roll you the go. attack, uh, it, yeah, it'll give you like at the bottom, like for my Eldritch Blast, it says twenty five for the attack, hundred and twenty range, and then Eldritch Blast, which you can click again for damage. Yeah, oh, okay, go. yeah, I just hit the attack thing. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so he did three damage to you. And that is his turn. Um, he's like really close. You can see his face. Um, it's really bland. He just looks like a normal guy. Really, really at the just fighting for the only thing he ever believed in. Uh, Destry, it is your turn. I mean, my friend here just gave him the option to run, even though it wasn't necessarily directed at him. So I'm going to see if I can take his head off with this one. <laughs> that or I'm going to like cartoon blast him in the face where it's just all like black smoke and like uh, soot left over and he just falls back, hopefully. 
knock him the fuck out. Well, not knock out, but, you know. Six. Damn it. Six damage. All right. He is still hanging on just a bit. Vinny, it is your turn. Well, you know what? We're just going to uh, hit him with... Let's see if this macro works. We're going to hit him with one of these. So it's got to make the deck safe. Okay, I'm sorry, I was reload. My roll 20 is reloading. Sacred Flame, he's got to make a deck save. Okay. He rolled a 12. And he takes three. Uh, okay. Um, he is hanging on at the very, very edge of his life now. Cool. It is your turn. Um, and I don't think you went last turn, so you have guidance on you for this. Oh, yeah, you know. Yeah, I forgot to roll initiative, and then, uh, sorry, my, my youngster came out for a second. Um, oh, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start yapping at him for smacking me around. I'm gonna cast... Distance Mockery. mockery or Tasha's hideous laugh laughter oh yeah that's the that's wrong all right so he needs to roll mockery. A... That's, that's the one i was trying to do vicious mockery i'm not trying to do okay roll that one or i guess it's still the hey. tc 13 right? yeah yeah there we go there's the proper one now What did he roll? He rolled a 13. Yeah, so he just barely saves it. All right, Blinken, your turn. Um, I'm going to... I'm going say, you know, I don't really like you. You're an asshole. But, you know, given the good grace, if you run away now... I won't kill you. I'll roll push. All right. Intimidation or persuasion? Blinken? I'm I'm here. It's just loading. Oh, okay. All right, so it's a nine for persuasion. <laughs> okay. Oh, he rolled a 17 on his charisma oh. save. Well, I warned you. <laughs> that ends my turn. He's going to go. 
uh, if I don't fight for this, what was I fighting for? And he rolls another attack on you, Blinken. What's he even fighting for? <laughs> your clothes. <laughs> yeah, your oh. clothes, technically. <laughs> your clothes and the gold you have on you, which should be like 14 gold pieces. That's a lot of money. No, I have more than 14. That, oh, you know, between us. 11. Blinken. Yeah, that, that misses. Yeah. He goes, Ugh! and he uh, falls over. on his ass when he falls over. I told you! Um, and we're gonna say actually he hurt himself on that. <laughs> yeah. He just kind of falls over into the sewers dead. <laughs> I, I can, that's funny. You guys can all walk past him. You can walk past that big hole that you know is there now because of the other one. Uh, and when you get further forward into the sewers, you realize that the sad one is gone. Uh, you see that you have come now to a ladder uh, leading upwards. Uh, it's actually a dead end. There's no other way to go uh, unless you turn back. Out of spite, when we walk by the body, I'm elder flapping it. <laughs> Just making Ooh, sure he stays It down. moves over. I go self defense. I go over and stomp it a few times. Oh, that's just me. <laughs> I think I think it's it's I I think he's dead. Look, I did it because I thought I saw a finger move. You're just I'm like... taking Buddy's dime bag. <laughs> <laughs> the pleasure palace will not build itself. <laughs> Look, uh, you're worried a minute as you're like scooting through it and trying to find it that maybe any of the sewage water got on the silk root powder. But you find it in his uh, pocket, you pull it out. This man tied a really tight bag on this, like, really thin uh, leather, uh, you know, it'd be waterproof uh, pouch that is clearly meant for holding uh, different types of spices or herbs or powders like this one. Uh, you're very familiar with this, Vinny. Oh, yes, impressive. <laughs> man of talents, I'm sure. So, anyways, I suppose we should try and track this guy because he's probably well. Do we know the way, or was he just taking off to his own direction? I mean, we have an idea of where to go. Yeah, y'all walked pretty far east. Um, I'm telling you, as a DM, that uh, this ladder will get you pretty close to where you need to go. I mean, she did give us a map as to where she, her house was, did she not? No, she just told you where it was. It's in the Sea Ward, on the border uh, between the Sea Ward and the North Ward. Yeah. Well, I have a general idea. I mean, I like point the letter. I, I guess we should pop it. Uh... Yeah, let's just pop our head up. I mean, like we're far enough away from the the museum where hopefully nothing should come of this and i mean uh hey uh wait i'm from this area i know exactly where she lived you would be familiar with the bar that she lives at yeah so i'm gonna bring the party there it had a name i want to say what the name is but if i can't find it in just a second Quill? Uh, Sage's Quill, yes. Thank you very much. I write notes sometimes. Thank yeah. you very much, man. That's fucking great. Alright. Let me go back to the map of Waterdeep. I just want you to know that notes are for nerds. Uh, Destry, you've definitely been to the Sage's Quill before. I'm sorry? You've been to this bar before, so you know where it is. Perfect. I uh, take us there. All right. Uh, you get out uh, at a manhole cover that is... Did I drag y'all back to the map? Yes, I did. What? Go away. That is right here. 
Y'all come out in this four-way crossroads. Destry, you recognize that you're about a block away from the North Ward. You know that if you walk down, you'll see this familiar bar built out of very old oak with a thatched roof. It kind of looks like a cottage more than a bar. You know that this is where many professors and many wizard's assistants come to unwind after a long day or where they come to get some uh, excellent food made while they enjoy their studies. Uh, you know that there's a couple of apartments upstairs above this bar. You've actually been to one of those apartments a few times chasing uh, uh, classy professors. Yes, chasing booty. <laughs> All right. Going back to this boat with Inchi. Um, Inchi, uh, after being held under for two minutes and really starting to strain uh, the amount that you can hold your breath, uh, you are pulled back up. Uh, and you can breathe in uh, that fresh uh, dock ward air. <laughs> she says, tell me who your collaborators are. Uh, <coughs> yes, uh, lady. Uh, the names are uh, uh, Fiona. Uh, I, I think uh, one was Yvonne. And uh, uh, what was his name? Oh, uh, uh, Benny. Benny, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you even trying to look like you're lying? Uh, as best as I can after being, you know, kind of drowned. Um, okay, roll a deception check. Five. Hell yeah. I'm going to cook the <laughs> for dinner while we go through this. Okay. Um, she shoves you immediately back under the water, uh, and Marigold, the doll, holds you there for quite a long time. Um, but not as long as you were held before. You feel yourself pulled back up uh, and thrown somewhere on the boat, and you hear another voice, a man's voice, and you hear uh, Alda Arkin uh, go, Oh, Skylas, Skylas, I thought you'd never make it. Oh. Darling, it's so good to see you. And you see uh, one of the guards you saw at the uh, museum earlier. Uh, your character wouldn't know this, Inchi, but this is actually the one that Destry uh, kind of made slip to make a big distraction earlier while he crept into the museum. Oh. Uh. <laughs> um. And he says, Alda, everything at the museum has been turned upside down. The men are asking questions. The city watches there. The Castellanta royal guards are there, as well as the El Torchal guards. Everything has gone to the elves. What, what are we to do? Surely they'll notice that we've been cooking the books by now. And Alda says, yes, darling, yes. We were supposed to wait until tomorrow. We would have had so much money charging the public to come in and see the Merc My Stone, but this goblin, and she leans over to you, and she, and she kicks you. And so hey, she yeah, out. In any real way, she is going to do two damage to you. That hurts, lady. And she yeah. goes, you're lucky you can talk at all. This thing and its crew no doubt scoped out the museum earlier today, plotted to steal the Merc Milestone and everything else we had. But fortunately, Skylas, I was able to hold on to, to what we were able to gather. The gemstones, the proceeds that we skimmed off the top, we were, able to, we were going to give them to Xanathar. We can take them and we can run. I just need you to go and get the boat that I know we can escape to Neverwinter on for us. Can you do that, Skylas? And Skylas goes, I would do anything for you, Alda. And they kiss deeply and passionately. <laughs> and Alda wraps it. a leg around him. And she shoves him off. And he goes running into the night. And she says, do you know 
know who I'm talking about. Captain Zazod of the Sea Maidens Fair. And he goes running off. And she says, Hey, now you, goblin. Lady, watching that was worse than the drowning. She says, Fine. I'll see what I can sell you for later. And she has Marigold uh, shove that sack back over your head. But right as she does it, in she, you can see Destry's raven oh. flying around outside the boat, keeping its eyes on you. Excuse me. Little Inchi, and then, you know, you know, he gets smothered by the bag, but it's all he gets slips out. Inchi, do you want to do anything, attempt anything at all? Uh, just wriggle for my restraints, because I think that's all Inchi can think he can do. All right, go ahead and roll a strength check. Uh, 17. Pretty good. 17? Damn. You feel that these things have been tied, tied extremely tightly, incredibly tightly, but with as hard as you're pushing, you feel them give just a little bit, but when you let off that pressure, they tighten again. Maybe if you can push just a bit harder, you could break free. That's yeah, shit. Okay, next time I can, I'll try that again. Okay. Um, you have the sack over your head, and Alda is walking around. You hear the sound of a cork coming out of a bottle and a glass being filled. You hear someone sit down in a rickety chair or a rickety bench that's built into this small room on the boat. And she says, Goblin, why are you doing this? Just an agent of chaos fucking up a perfectly good operation. Yeah, that was his name. That guy who hired me was named Chaos, and he told me to go in, and swear at you, steal your gold, steal your, steal your big daggers, and that, that's exactly Drop what happened. You, you got me. Drop the act. You're going to die tonight or be sold into slavery, and I am going to have to go somewhere and adopt a new name and a new face and new hair. Do you know how much work that is? Tell me why. Why are you doing this? Well, to be exact, his name was John Chaos, uh, and uh, he he's a real man. You can look him up. He hired me. Uh, uh, tell him I, I'm captured. He'll 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 explain everything, please. John Chaos. It's, uh, oh, K- <laughs> you hear the sound of that bottle uncorking again, and a deep sigh. All right, going back to everybody else. I'm back. Okay. All right, going back to everybody else in the C ward. Just a second. Where are y'all? Where did I put the goblins? Okay. All right, y'all um, uh, see that there is a light on at this place. One of the apartments is clearly occupied. Someone is walking uh, back and forth up there. Uh, the door to the uh, to the bar is slightly ajar. What do you do? I mean, uh, yeah. Knock, knock. Who's there? All right. Uh, as you knock on the door, <laughs> um, uh, you hear someone uh, rush from uh, upstairs and say something like, oh, oh, God's above, God's above. Heavens help us. There's so little time left. Uh, Destry, roll a d12.
I roll it in a two. You roll it in a two? Mm-hmm. Adrenaline courses through your body. You have advantage on strength saves and strength saving throws. This stone becomes a lot easier to lift as you see the face of Dr. Dannels holding a small blue candle answer the door and say, Oh, heavens above, thank gods you are here. Um, and she welcomes you uh, into her home, uh, uh, up the stairs, into her apartment. You see the walls are covered uh, in various pages uh, ripped out of uh, books uh, with the words written by hand. You see sketches of stones and different archaeological uh, finds, different uh, architectural structures, different sketchings of pots, a lot of pots actually, different shaped pots, different types of knives and stones used to be uh, specific tools. She has books strewn all about her floor and various chairs all through with dirty dishes with bits of food all over it. But in the center of the room, in the center of the room, there is a completely uh, silver uh, piece of uh, a, t a table with four legs and four legs extending out from it upward. And it forms like a little, like a four-sided, uh, it's a table where every corner has a pillar sticking straight up. Carved onto each of the pillars are different types of various runes. And uh, sitting beside the table uh, uh, is a big uh, pot of steaming liquid that is slowly being turned by a spoon animated by magic. Uh, you can see that between each of these pillars is a pane of glass. Uh, this all must have been very expensive to get. You know that Dr. Daniels only had 80 gold coins as her separate package from the university. She probably spent all of it building this capture mechanism for the Merc Meyer Stone. She says, quick, 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 give it here, give it here before it, before it hatches, before anything worse happens. Destry, do you hand it over? I'm contemplating it. I'd be lying if I said it hasn't crossed my mind to try to get more out of her. I mean, we did just destroy half the museum. I'm sure... You know, ah, fuck it, and I hand her the stone. You hand her the stone, and it has that same strength effect. And she feels it, and it feels all warm, just like it did to you. And she can see the big crack that's running down the center of it. And she says, oh, oh, everyone, gods old and new, help us. And she picks the stone up, and she sets it inside that table with the four pillars and the glass panes. And then she takes out a little wand and she taps that cauldron that has that spinning uh, viscous liquid in it. And it picks up and it tilts over and it pours over the Merkmeyer stone onto the silver table with these runes carved into it. And it fills and it fills and it fills between this glass and pillared exposure that she, or enclosure that she has made. Uh, and the Merkmeyer stone starts glowing just a little bit brighter, maybe reacting to the warmth, maybe reacting to all of you, maybe trying to save itself. You don't know, but it's slowly encased in this yellow, waxy fluid that begins to harden and harden, and you realize that it must have been some form of amber or tree sap, and it's now been enclosed in this perfect yellow cube. And she says, I believe that that's everything that it needs to work. The occult manuals say that if you enclose it in a geometric shape with these runes on it in amber, it cannot grow anymore. Do you guys say anything? So what's your, what's your plan? She says, shush, shush, I want to make sure that it actually works. And she stares at her creation in silence for a full minute as that warm green glow inside the stone fades away. And it now just looks like an opaque green cloudy stone encased in amber. 
with oh. a giant crack running down the center of it. And she okay. lets out a sigh of relief. I'm going to lean over beside her and, you know, like, put my head just slightly up to the right a bit and look at the stone and go, nothing's happening. She says, yes, I wanted to make sure that nothing continued to happen. So what's your plan? My plan? My plan? Ah. Uh... There are various artificers that have thought about ways to examine the insides of certain objects. Perhaps if I could find some way to transfer this and capture Merkmeyer stone to it, we could examine it further and find out what further secrets it has to hold about the societies and areas that it came from. I never got to do a shavings analysis. Perhaps we could drill into this. And she begins walking around her apartment and grabbing uh, different things, talking about the scientific research she could do with this. Um, is there, like, a pile of books on the table beside us? Uh, yeah. Cool, I'm gonna knock those over to get her out of her monologue. By accident, she obviously. Does. Oh, oh, I, I do apologize. It has been a minute since I cleaned. Yeah, um, no, not, the, not that plan that I meant, and uh, I don't necessarily like that plan. I meant, are you going to be staying here with that clearly stolen artifact from the museum that got broken into tonight? And two, um, why don't you just try burying it somewhere? Like, the spine of the world. I hear that they have a lot of good places to hide it, you know, given that it's literally a big fucking dragon skeleton. I've been to those mountains. I know the perfect abandoned va valley. Perfect, but you can hide it there. What about my, my research, my, my career? Surely they will believe me now. Look at the big Th crack then, down the center of it. Then you can do it out there away from everyone else. I feel like that is a safe plan. But, you know, following away back from to the first portion. Yes. You're holding this on to a very... Home. You're holding on to a very expensive item that was just stolen from a recently partially destroyed museum held by one of, the, one of the more powerful families in the city, I feel like staying here would be a death trap. Um, does anybody else want to say anything to her? Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely nothing stopping you from doing your research somewhere else. Where you're not a wanted criminal. You can come back and be a big hero and show everyone your findings. After, you know, they kind of forgot about the whole destroyed museum thing. Well, and... after they've at least had time to calm down about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm not totally saying this, because if you get caught and you rat us out, I might have to do something about that. But I don't want you to, you know, get caught and rat us out. Because I don't think they're going to take it kindly when you say, Oh yeah, I had it stolen by Hoomst. Um, yeah, so that's before... goon number four, capital G. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, be even before you make your threat, uh, she sees oh, the Oh, I'm logic. not making a threat. That is more of a statement. Before you deliver your blunt statement, uh, she sees the logic of it. Um, she sees the logic of it, um, and that slowly starts hitting her. And she starts realizing, like, all the things she's going to have to do and the danger that she's in and how quickly she needs to get out of the city. Um, and she starts looking around and going, oh, 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 this is so much, so much to do so quick. I have to be out before the sun is up. Oh, you, heavens. You didn't put any thought into this, did you, except for get the stone? 
Um, and you hear the sound of spurs clicking across the wooden floor behind you. All of you turn around and you see a familiar figure in fine clothes and a 10 gallon hat that have all been worn down and filled with holes with age. You see Galanit stepping before you and he says, now there, there, Dr. Daniels. You know, one of the things we do at the Golden Keys is make sure all of our clients get out safe. So don't you worry about that. I have the perfect way for you to get out of the city, but I do need you to be packed within the next 10 minutes. So go ahead and get on that for me, okay? And Dr. Daniels goes, oh, heavens, oh, heavens above. And she starts running around her apartment, uh, grabbing the most important things to her, which are various books. Uh, while she's doing that, Galanis uh, says to all of y'all, he goes, now, well, well, everybody, how, how do you feel about what you did? The mission is successful. What is your opinion of it? Feel like we're a light short. Yeah, one man short. Dead security guard. All the alarms went off. City watch called. Curator tipped off. I know multiple people saw someone's face. I gotta be honest, crew. I don't think this is such a great job. Maybe I want such a good fit for that bigger job I got planned. You literally asked us to infiltrate and break into one of the more heavily guarded areas in less than 48 hours notice. Yeah, I feel like Destry, it wasn't too bad. Destry, that's the thing. This ain't heavily guarded. This was a cakewalk compared to the challenges that we would face going to get uh, this same thing. And you see him hesitate, and he's trying to pick his words carefully. He doesn't say what he's trying to say. He talks around it. Going to get this, 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 this thing that Xanathar and the Castellanthas and the Doom Raiders are going for, we're going to go up against a lot worse than this. If this was too much for you, I'm... And he looks at all of you, and he that charm he had is gone. He looks disappointed, and he looks concerned. He really needed this to work out, and it's not working out. What do y'all say? Oh, um, Vinny, real quick. This man in the 10-gallon hat, his name is Galanis. He works for an organization called the Golden Keys, and he is trying to recruit y'all into the Golden Keys. This museum job was kind of a test, a tryout. He's implied that he has a much bigger job planned uh, throughout Waterdeep. Well, I suppose there were a few wrinkles that need to be uh, ironed out here and there, but uh, ultimately the job got completed. And, uh, we don't have any guards right here, right now, banging on the door. So, plenty of wiggle room for, uh, plenty of room for growth. I mean, he is right, and I would like to add, you helped supply items for this job. You didn't necessarily help plan it, so if you have an issue with the planning... Do feel free to pitch in. You know, it's a two-way street. If we're the one doing the job and having to make the plans and you have an issue with how we do it, you are always able to suggest and or help in the planning phase. So, yes, of course, in the future I would be involved. This was a test to see how well you do on your own. He says, I need a day to think about it. And he turns around and he starts rubbing his neck. He looks really nervous and he says, I don't know. Um, I can't do this. I can't do this on my own. Oh, boy. Or right, Did y'all hear that? Hear yeah, what? He, yeah. Yeah, he turns around and he says, oh, oh, I, I, I can't do this on my own. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough time for this. Um. And then Dr. Daniels comes over to him, and she has a, a three briefcases that she's holding uh, in her hands. And she says, I, I, I have everything that I need, sir. 
And he says, and that charm immediately returns. And he says, well, Dr. Daniels, let's see about getting you on out of this city. And I bet that I can do it without having to go in any sewers, but we might have to go into sewers. So did you bring even one pair of clothes with you? And she says, no. And she shakes her head and she says, all right, I'll, I'll help you get some clothes. Uh, and they walk off uh, together. And he says, oh, by the way, boys, a deal's a deal. And he throws uh, three gold, three sacks at you. And he throws them from one hand, but one goes to Huel, one goes to Blinken, one goes to Destry, each perfectly. And he says, and I'll tell you what too, newbie, for showing up. And he tosses you one, uh, two, uh, Vinny. Uh, what's your character's name again? Chazel, perhaps? Chazel, Brad. Chazel, Brad. Okay. I'll choose an easier name. I like just going forward. I, I mean, I got it. Just got to write it out phonetically and remember to ask you every once in a it while. It says the okay. uh, name in chat here in Roll20 if you've got them minimized. Okay, cool. Shazafrad. Shazafrad. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, he says, and I will hold on to Inchi's chair until he comes back. You all should get a move on on getting to him. And never, ever go in on another heist alone. Always have backup. You never know what could sneak up on you. And him and Dr. Daniels start walking away. Uh, the four of you are in this room. Each of you has a golden sack or a sack of 50 golden dragons, Waterdeep's version of a gold coin. Uh, it has carved onto it a shiny, elegant face of a roaring golden dragon. Each of you also levels up, as you will do after each successful heist. So we got 50 gold each? 50 gold each. Deal's a deal. Well, on a side note, I think it would be rude of us to leave any perishable goods in the pantry. We don't want the good <laughs> doctor to come back to rotten food in the pantry. So, uh, if you'll excuse me, <laughs> and I'm going to begin rummaging through the cabinets. She definitely... She definitely used to shop at the fantasy equivalent of Whole Foods. So there's some good stuff here, but it'll perish in like two days. So you got to eat it quick. Is she gone? She is in the other room grabbing a set of clothes. They actually do that pretty quickly, and then they walk out the door. And Galana says, I'll meet you at the Yawning Portal later. Sounds good. And I'm going to open up the briefcase of holding and whatever's not nailed down, I'm just going to start scooping it into it. <laughs> uh, you notice she has a few uh, figurines around that are probably worth a few gold coins each. I'll say that there are three of them worth uh, two gold coins each. These are figures of like uh, of uh, uh, ancient gods or uh, various wizards uh, that were very intelligent. You recognize uh, two of them. Vinny, you get a bushel of uh, fresh-picked grapes. Or not a bushel. You get a whole, like, vine of, like, fresh-picked purple grapes that have seeds in them uh, and a few other uh, fresh fruits. Lincoln, what would you like to do? Oh, you know, she left these nice-looking books uh, here just into the briefcase. They go. They go. I will let you pick three books on a subject, but you have to tell me a subject. Or any three books, but you have to give me three subjects. 
Uh, <clears throat> creation of Water Deep. Okay. Uh, I'm looking for a blueprint of uh, Water Deep. You know, she worked in a museum. I'm sure there's something similar. I'll tell you what. As you uh, are looking around for this... Well, didn't you grab the statues? Let somebody else grab something first. I grab statues. Yeah. Blinken, would you like to grab anything oh. from Dr. Dennis's abandoned apartment? Okay, uh, you grab a, an apple that's sitting on a table, and you're watching Huel uh, stuff some books into the briefcase of holding. Um, you notice that a card falls out one of these books, and it's a thick card. It's like carved out of a... Or you notice a, a, a slim tablet falls out of one of these books onto the shelf. It is a slim granite tablet, and, inside, and on it has been etched the words, El Torchel Library. You would recognize this as a kind of a magical library card that shows you are a dues-paying member of this library. Yeah, you would, you would notice that, yeah. I remember you were trying to look at dragon stuff in a library earlier. All you right, know, I, I, uh, Huel, would you like to grab anything? Hmm, do I think I can just grab, like, within reach, or...? Yeah, anything that would be in a professor's apartment. It's kind of up for grabs right now. I'm kind of going to call it after one round of snatching, though, because I don't want to just load y'all up with every item you could ever want. Yeah, I'll just start grabbing whatever I can. Um, trying to think of what would look interesting to you here. Um, uh, I have a question. What's up? Is there a lease to this apartment sitting around somewhere? Um, you start digging around uh in her personals uh with Huel's help. Uh, Huel, uh, you see that uh, she also has a bank card, or, or a parchment that has uh, her banking details on it. Uh, maybe you could use this to like open up your own bank account here, or start using her bank account here. Um, Destry, as you're moving through it, uh, you find uh, records. Uh, that show a uh, weekly payment on this apartment to the Sage's Quill, but you see that those payments are made by El Torchel uh, Villa, not Dr. Daniels herself. Damn. Because I was thinking, if this house was paid off for the next little while, we could just have a free place to stay for a little bit. I mean, wasn't she recently laid off after making a big stink about the place? Wouldn't she be a pretty... Yeah, she tried to rob the place, like, just recently. So she already tried... Yeah, they're gonna come back and investigate her. This place is freaking hotter than the fires of hell. Did she even take the egg with her? Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, they... Uh, Galanis... Uh, comes back uh, and he puts on uh, a pair of gloves that have these runes carved in them and he just picks up that big table and walks out of the room with it. <laughs> yeah, just picks up the table that has like that Merkmeyer uh, mm -hmm. amber enclosure and he just walks out with it. Speaking oh, of yeah. hot, this is freaking thirsty work. I'm going to continue searching through the pantry to see if there's any bottles of booze. You okay? I'm gonna call it after this. Yeah, fair enough. It can't just, it can't just be free reign on her apartment. 
Uh, we, we want I'm all her food I, and I'm drink. gonna be somewhat mild. I'm just gonna steal one bottle to split between us. <laughs> uh, Shazafrad, you're holding like like you look like the god of you look like hedonism bot right now. You have like a a vine a vine of grapes. You have like various <laughs> fruits in one hand. You like have like a a, a big like peach uh, with your index finger and your thumb, and you're trying to grab a bottle of wine with your hand. You see, like, good old reliable, uh, cheap—not cheap wine, but like decent wine. That would be a, a good night. It would get your uh, belly roaring. But then you also see a bottle of very expensive wine. You know it's not that good, but the name on it is an old castle or old Waterdeep uh, noble name. You know that you could sell that bottle of wine for a few gold coins. Which one are you gonna grab? The one you would drink or the one you would sell? Oh. All the hardships of life. I'm going to just sort of agonize over it for a second. Be like, right, someone with spare hands will take this one to the pawn shop. Someone else with spare hands grab what? How many do we everybody, have? Everybody, everybody four? else's hands are are full. What do you choose, Faz? You're you're in a telltale game. Make a choice. Oh hell yeah! Quick, oh. we gotta leave before the guards show up. <laughs> you know yeah, what? I'm gonna I'll go for a delayed on. pleasure. I'm gonna take the more pricey bottle. Well, I mean, right, you... by using the money you acquire, you can buy more pleasure. Exactly. You know you could sell this particular 50-year-old bottle of wine for five gold pieces. Oh, well, absolutely delectable. All Sometimes right. the tease is better than the release. Blinken, Ooh. you got a library card. Destry, you got the founding of Waterdeep and a blueprint of Waterdeep. Chaz, you got the wine worth five gold pieces and a bunch of grapes. Fuel, you got uh, bank account information. Uh, that sound good to everybody? Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, Y'all step out of her apartment. You go downstairs and out of the Sage's Quill. You are back on the streets of Waterdeep. And you know now, your th or your thoughts now, turn to your friend, Inchi. Inchi. We go back to you uh, in the dock ward. This boat is rocking gently back and forth. Uh, the last thing Alda Allen did was try to get you to say why you did this, why you risked any of this, uh, and you didn't say anything. She's been drinking, you've been sitting here, uh, and that guard, uh, Skylas, runs back. And he says, Alda, Alda, my love. I wasn't able to talk to Captain Zazod, but I found one of his drow lieutenants, and I sent him your message. They said that they will be on their way with the boat, and they said that the terms of your deal still stand. Whatever you did, lover, I am grateful for it. And they embrace, and they kiss again. Uh, and Miriam puts her hands, like, on his face, and she starts touching his neck, and as they push away from each other, she keeps her fingers on his neck, those long nails that she had earlier she has two of them still on her on his neck right next to his uh, adam's apple and she says skylas thank you for everything you've done but that deal was only for one person and she shoves her nails right into his throat and he goes <laughs> and he falls over and he's bleeding out on the boat in she you see this happen uh, and you also see uh, Destry's raven flying in circles around uh, the boat. What do you do? Uh, lady, I, I, I should be worried about this uh, shit, but I'm glad you're not kissing anymore. That was gross. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I, please, I, I, I'm innocent. Let me go. And, uh, and she's still wriggling. Trying to get out of his restraints. Okay. Roll a strength check. Jesus. 
Fuck. And she's yeah. not that strong. He's not. No, you have a plus zero, but every time you've made a strength check, it's worked almost. All right. So yeah. you break through these bonds. And as soon as, what do you do when you realize that uh, you've managed to actually break the rope a little bit? Is it just uh, out of arc? Is it just out of Arkin in this room? It's Alda Arkin, the dead body of Skyless, the security guard, and the doll, Marigold. Mm. Is there a door around me? Yes, you're in, like, the small cabin of, like, a fishing boat. Like, imagine, like, an old, like, like Japanese fishing boat. It looks like a canoe with one little, like, sheltered part in the center. Mm. That's what you're in. Uh, there's no actual, like, door on it. There's just a door frame. Okay. Uh, He's as sitting soon... on the bench on one side. You're sitting on the bench on the other side. Marigold is sitting on the floor between you. As soon as Inchi breaks his restraints, he wants to use his uh, final level two uh, uh, spell slot to do invisibility and bolt out that door. Oh... Okay, you don't even have to roll for that, do you? I guess not. All right, you cast invisibility. Um, would you try to do it stealthily, like when she's not looking or something like that? Is am I within her eyes? Am, am I within the doll's eyesight? There's two people in the yeah. room. Yeah, I'm sorry. This room is like maybe like six feet wide at most. Gotcha. So, so uh, and yeah. she turns invisible, but right now he's just bolting out. He's just trying to get okay. distance between them right now. Turn and bolt. All right. I can't think of any check I would have to make you make to run past them really quick. Because you can move and cast a spell on the same turn. So you bolt out of the fishing boat. You land on the docks. The dock ward uh, docks, you know, you get what you pay for. So these uh, bits of wood actually bend underneath you slightly. They are wet. They are low to the water. Uh, they get splashed all the time. Nobody repairs them. Some of them are probably rotting away. Uh, but you step onto the docks and you just run. I think you, what's your movement speed? Uh, let me check. Movement speed is 30. Movement speed is 30. All right. Is Marigold's character shooting on a load? I guess not. I can't find the stats for uh, Scarecrow, but I assume its running speed would be 20. So you hear uh, Alda Arkin uh, say, as you push off the boat and make it rock, she says, Marigold, Marigold, go get him. Bring him back here. Uh, and Marigold bolts out of the boat. Uh, she is dashing towards your location, uh, in she, but she can't see you. She'd have to make a perception check to try to identify you in any way. Uh, but that's her turn. What do you want to do? Uh, and she just keeps bolting for uh, shore, whether that's a dock, whether that's straight uh, on the mainland, whatever he can. He's just trying to get far inland as he can right now. Okay. Uh, so you see where you are on the map, right? Uh, yes. Yes? Okay. Uh, so you're running along on this dock. Uh, at your next turn, or I guess you could dash this turn, you'd be on the street. You are on Dock Street in the Dock Ward. Um, you are not super familiar with this area of Waterdeep. You know that somewhere around here will be the big streets that run through Waterdeep, the Way of the Dragon, the Snail Street, and the High Road. Uh, so you would be running around trying to look for that. Marigold is going to roll a perception check. 
to see if she can see you running away from the bending of the wood. She got a 15, so she continues running after you, but as soon as you step onto the street, she has no way to track you. And the doll just kind of runs back and forth at the edge of the docks, looking for where you are. Inshi, you have escaped Alda Arkin and um, Marigold the doll. What would you like to do? You know, you're still here. here. You can uh, turn still around in- and see Marigold and Alda. Uh, you could watch them get revenge, run away, go back to your friends. Uh, as soon as he, as and she sees his pursuers uh, hesitate, and she kind of slows down to sneakily keep on going, but he's just trying to find something familiar, and I think he kind of goes down Wharf Street, uh, you know, just by instinct, trying to find uh, something he finds familiar. Okay. Um, as you walk along the dock ward, you notice that this is not as nice as other areas of Waterdeep. There are no drift globes here uh, that light the streets in this brilliant white light. Um, and the lamp posts and torch posts that are here, uh, not all of them are lit. Some of them have been destroyed uh, for who knows what reason. As you walk further and further into the dock district, it gets away from stalls and shops and butchers and places where they cut fish uh, and places where people buy uh, fresh imports. And it turns into warehouses and such as you get to splice it. You notice as you make your way left that you are now on the way of the dragon. If you travel north, you know that you will eventually uh, reach the trades ward, which is where the yawning portal is. That's the bar you've been staying at with your friends and Galanis. Uh, there is also a that- sewer uh, entrance here, a manhole cover. Huh. I think, I mean, as long as that invisibility spell lasts and she's just going to make his way to the yawning portal on the street because he's had enough of water for a day, sewage or not. So he's just walking down the street getting to the yawning portal. Okay. All right. As you start walking along, you hear the sound of wings flapping above you. Um, and eventually this uh, crow that, or this raven that you've been calling Little Inchi uh, lands on your shoulder uh, as you begin. Bottom invisible. Yep, while you're invisible. Oh, shit. Um, And it says, Little Inchi, you are good, yes? Okay? Uh, uh, Yeah, uh, no, Inchi, I'm trying to get to uh, Bonnie uh, and maybe my friends. uh, are, Are they at the Yanni portal? Do you know? He's... He says, I will reach out to my master and let them know that you have not died, little goblin. Um, And he continues just kind of sitting on your shoulders, uh, giggling every once in a while at the idea of standing on something that's very short uh, but invisible. Uh, Everybody else, uh, what's up? Uh, As you can say, Inchi releases an invisibility thing so he doesn't draw notice to the bird just sitting midair. But he still keeps on going. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Everybody else, or Destry, you hear in your head, uh, Master Destry, the goblin is safe. He has made himself safe and has made his way to the yawning portal. Well, that's good. All right. I'll bring him to the portal and we'll meet him there. <clears throat> Uh, would everybody like to take a like three minute break? Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Sure. Yeah. All right. Grab some. Be right back. Yep. Be right back.
I'm back. Uh. What's up, everybody? Is everyone back? I am. Yeah. There you, sir. Is Kirby back? Yep. And I think I heard Vinny's voice. All right. So y'all get back to the yawning portal. Um, let's say it is about, let's see, the heist happened at 2 a.m. It would have taken about an hour. I'll say another hour. All right, I'll say it's about 4.30 as all of y'all uh, climb in uh, through the front door of the yawning portal. Uh, y'all are staying here, so y'all have a key uh, to get through the front entrance. <laughs> Shit, now I can't move is, any of y'all. Does Inchi um, arrive to the yawning portal before, after, or with the party? Um, I would say that, Inchi, you got here before. Uh, what did you want to do? Did you want to sit at a table, go to a room? Is Bonnie at the counter? Uh, no, it is not. Uh, but you know that her shift will be starting soon. Her shift starts when the sun rises. Uh, I just kind of... Where's the nearest trash can? Uh, it would be behind the bar. All right. And, and she, you know, just escaping death, does not care about breaking the rules. So let's find the counter and just rummaging through the trash and find something to eat because he's hungry. All right. Uh, as you're sitting there uh, eating, uh, everybody else starts coming through the door. It is uh, <clears throat> Shazafrad, Blinken, um, Huel, and uh, Destry all come through the door. You guys all see Inchi <clears throat> eating the remains of like an apple that's slightly brown all the way around at the counter. What do y'all do? You're all together now. <laughs> um, Lincoln will probably say something like, wow, you're okay. How the hell did you get out of that? <laughs> hey, hey guys, I missed you. Um, I I got uh, kidnapped and uh, bitten. I got kicked too, uh, but I escaped. I was on this boat, but you know whatever. I I, I got back and I'm hungry and uh, I need some gold. Where's that Galani guy? Gal Gal Galani C? Galanis. Oh, Gal Gal yeah, yeah, Gal Gal Galaxy. Mr. G, uh, <laughs> I, I'm awaiting my payment, and so is my gooners. They need release from their, uh, from their, uh, work. Uh, expect, uh, well, speaking of the gooners, um, the, the, the I don't know what, what your sad one is. He ran away. Uh, I'm pretty sure the other ones are dead because, you know, we kind of, Killed them because they they wanted more and things escalated and I point at they tried to steal my pants and I, pe I point at him for us yeah and he, yeah I point at Hugh and he's like yeah he kind of stomped someone a couple times too so I I I'm pretty sure wow. they're dead they quite literally okay. tried to steal my pants if, if they tried to steal your I, I would I would kill someone if they stole my pants so. I, yeah. I, I no, understand. no, no, they didn't, they didn't steal my, they tried. Key definition there. Yeah, I, I know, and if someone even grabbed my pants, I, I would probably stab them. I, I, I mean, that's just instinct. I, I, I get it. I, I, I hope you know, I get it. 
as Inchi motions to like his pants when he's like, somebody tried to steal my pants, <laughs> y'all notice they are covered in blood, as is like the ratty shirt that he has on. <clears throat> you, you do it all right I'm there. Also gonna, I'm also going to change something. I'm going to say Galanis gave y'all Inchi's 50 gold pallet okay. for y'all to give to him. So okay. Inchi, you can have that. Anyway, I, I just want my gold. Maybe some little fish eggs from Bonnie whenever she gets here. When does she get here? Hey, 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 Barky. When does Bonnie get here? There's no one here right now. He's <laughs> just talking I to just no one. Slammed the, I, I slammed the counter. <laughs> Barky. I'll slam the counter with him with the gold bag. And there you go. Here's your share. Oh, oh thank he's you. He's slamming the bar counter at the yawning portal. <laughs> I'm just slapping it, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go up to the room. I'm walking away quickly. Yeah. I want me some fish eggs. And then I'm like, I, um, actually, Destry, before you do that, uh, could I have you stay down here real quick? Um, before Galanis comes back, I would like y'all to talk about him. Okay. Uh, what y'all <laughs> want to do about him, what he said the last time y'all met with him. He's been kind of weird this whole time. Y'all don't know if you can trust him. You got paid by him, and now your brain's not thinking about the money. Your brain's thinking about other things. All those weird things he says, like, I don't have much time left on this plane, or I've overstayed my welcome on this plane, or I have to get back, or I don't have much time, or just the way that he says things to you that you can't remember. Oh, clearly... He has a lot of gold lying around. Clearly, he has something going on. The the way he was able to pick up that massive table with the amberized Merkmire stone, the way he walks without making a sound, uh, and just the memory thing, it all kind of bothers you. It all creeps up on you at, in this moment. Oh, I, I've already come to the conclusion. He's obviously a djinn of some kind. Uh, real quick, real quick, Vinny, uh, this man named Galanis, he's weird, he's mysterious, he's distant, he's very charming, but he clearly always has ulterior motives or some kind of other plan going on. He's mentioned a few times that he has a really big plan that would take down Xanathar and the Castle Anters and some group of bards he keeps mentioning. Um, it's clearly a big deal, but you have really no idea where he comes from or what he's about or really anything about him other than that he has money and need. Hmm. And also, he invited everybody here about by telling them what this big heist was. He told them. He used words. He spoke it out to them. But none of them can remember what he said. Where did he come from and where did he go? Could his name be where did he Hot Nigel? Cotton Joe. I'll just slap uh, you in the face. Said, yeah, you just <laughs> said he was a a, a gin, Destry. Yeah, I'm coming to the conclusion he's some kind of gin. He's an outer being from outside of our realm, and the reason why he has so much money and powers is because, uh, well, they don't age the same way we do. So he could have been around for a lot fucking longer. And the picking up the table. Gauntlets of hill, uh, hill giant, storm giant, fire giant strength, because we, you said he put something on. And as for the memory, all of them have very high intelligence scores. Therefore, he would have a good memory. And the boot, like the walking around quietly thing, obviously boots of elven kind. We all know this. I mean, it sounds um, like he could just be a wizard. He could also just be a wizard. <laughs> You know that the memory seems, the memory effect that he has on you seems to be attached to this blue stone. He was holding it in his hand when he told you all the details of the heist that he was planning, and when, and he was touching you at the same time. So one hand was holding the blue stone. Oh, you mean our memory. Okay. You. Yeah, and he affected your memory. You can't remember what he said. It oh, just all okay. goes real foggy. Oh, I thought uh, you meant, you, like, his memory. <laughs> No, 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 not his memory. He He's affecting your memory somehow with this blue stone that he keeps in a pouch around his neck. My big friend, uh, uh, you, you said Galantis' name was uh, Cotton Eye Joe? 
Uh, I bet someone named Kick and Jack. He might be a cousin of him. Uh, we can ask him. That is uh, a possibility, he... yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, on a side note, uh, I'm going to have to go do something in the next day or two. So, hey, he's in here. High five. Not high five, dude. <laughs> business. Yeah. Not not me. Mm. Oh, um Yep. So what are we gonna do about Galanis? Are we gonna trust him? Are we gonna keep working for him? We gonna, like, shank <laughs> Did him this gold come from him? Did this gold come from him? Yes. Then yeah. I want me some okay. gold. He says yeah, yes. you're gonna shank him. No, uh, he he wants to work for him. I'm I'm assuming. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um. So we're all just gonna work for him until it suits us, I guess. I mean, I'm not really hearing I mean, that. assuming he comes back to us, since he seemed pretty unimpressed by the uh, by the job. I'm just hoping that the next job will have us have pre-planned an hour before we actually have to do it, because then that would be stupid, and I'm just going to run away. Oh yeah! Instead of being told, "Hey, go do this," and you have like ten minutes to plan it and do it, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that would be nice too, wouldn't it? I mean, I keep uh, recalling that the plan was pretty straightforward, and then someone kept adding carts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're I'm right about that. Misty stuff the whole time. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Well, I'm pretty right. sure someone <laughs> said, let's not commit arson right before <laughs> requesting, and I quote, <laughs> A cart full of explosives. Uh, I don't know the heist went just about. fine for me. All I know so, is yeah, that... I'm down. I mean, next time we'll just grease you up with some butter or olive oil or something. That'll keep you from getting nabbed. Yeah, yeah. if you want to grease him up. But that's it. Like if he, uh, uh, like before, just before we do the job, he just has to swim in the sewers and make sure all the shit's covered all over him. Yeah, let's and... do, let's go with the butter. I think the butter <laughs> will work just as good with a fraction of the smell. <laughs> okay, as y'all are all sitting around talking about this, you hear the door open and you hear the sound of spurs uh, marching against the wooden floor. Uh, and you hear another set of footsteps with it and into the bar area comes Galanis, and he also has Bonnie with her. It's around 5 a.m., the sun is rising, and he walks in with her, and he says, Well, Bonnie, it's been a full night for me. I think I'm going to skip breakfast and perhaps sleep through the day. Uh, but you get my companions here, whatever they would like, before they head up to the room for the morning, okay? And Bonnie goes, Yes, sir, man. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Um, and she nods at you, and she and she says, "Good morning, and she." Bonnie, I missed you. I want some fish eggs, please. Fish eggs, okay, all right. Uh, let me see what we have in the back, and I'll see if I can fire up the stove before uh, Davis gets here. Okay, all right. Uh, so she walks into the back uh, to the kitchen. Um, Galanis uh, motions over to this table that he's standing at. Uh, it's his preferred table. It's in front of the giant uh, yawning uh, troll face fireplace that's right here. Uh, yeah. He sits with his back to it, and he pulls a flask out of his uh, chest, and he starts drinking from it. And he says, well, crew, I know that I put a lot on you very quickly, but I do think the gold reward was worth it. But when it comes to us working together in the future, I've been thinking about it a lot, and I think I'm going to have to call it right here. I'm afraid y'all just don't have what the golden vault or the golden keys are looking for. 
And she doesn't care, and he's counting his gold on the table. He is saying that he's not going to give you more gold in the future. Um, uh, I'll, I'll throw in and say something like, look, given the time that we have planning, things were out of proportion, I'll admit, but uh, overall was done. Gave her the item, and we were on our merry way. Uh, I guess backlash that happened was uh, I pointed at the goblin and she was nowhere to be found, and he apparently is fine now. Except I point at the blood stain all over him. Probably and she got hit a few. And waves. <laughs> and she just waves. Um. So, and she, it is good that you found your way back here. I was worried about you, but I had to take care of the doctor. Now, see here, crew, I want y'all to understand something. I'm not mad at y'all. I may have sounded like that earlier, but I'm frustrated with myself. I tried to set up something here very quickly. I thought I could, I thought I could make my old crew again in one evening, and and that's not really how that works. I need to take a step back from this. I need to go back to the drawing board. I'm I'm trying to move too fast. So I say we spend one more night here. Y'all can eat, drink, and sleep on my tab, and then I'm going to be on my way, and we'll all forget we ever met each other. Okay? So what? I didn't sell you out for nothing? I got kicked for you, damn it. Thank you for the gold, though. So here's my thought. <clears throat> How about one more job? Something we can actually sit down and plan out in more than, say, a day and a half. Right? Because, you know, spur of the moment, shit happens. Plans never go the way we expect, but... Actually, I don't know why I'm trying to convince you to let us work for you. I don't know fuck all about you. I mean, I, I endured... I endured torture so I didn't rat you out Mr. G I I'm just saying I, I think I earned a little bit of yeah I can do this you know quote unquote I can do this the I I'm awesome I did it you have obviously planning doesn't always go as so Got rid of that. Was Erkmeyer Stone and um, totally not a Tyrannosaurus. Yes, I don't know, but besides the point, look, we uh, did the deed. I think, honestly, my my opinion, I think we we could pull it off. It's just we needed more options on plans or like more timing on plans that was a bit rushed i get it but like with the given um items i guess you would call it, um i think we did a good job on that aspect uh, and i like look at uh <laughs> i look at a uh fucking uh heel and be like i i i'm sorry about the cart thing but again drastic Holy things shit. sacrifice everything you know you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes in our I'm, line of work, you know? I'm sorry, I missed a detail. As y'all were walking back into the yawning portal, Huel, you saw, and I guess everybody saw, parked right underneath the street lamp entrance to uh, the yawning portal was Huel's cart. Exactly how it was before you blew it up. Oh. One axle on it broken and a fresh paint job. Yeah. I swear we, we so, used that thing before. <laughs> There's many a curse uh, uh, in, in uh, Waterdeep. I, I wouldn't put it past it just uh, being something else. No, Huel, you know that your cart. You know it's there because the used cart salesman put it back there after you shook his hand. <laughs> like, yeah, he, he, he fixed it, but like, he left the wheel broken. I don't, I don't get it. 
He said he would always bring it back in the condition it was when it was destroyed. So if you fix this wheel and then it got destroyed, he'd bring it back fixed. But since it was broken when it was destroyed, it's broken now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did tell you not to make a deal with him. Nothing bad will come from anyway, that. Um, okay, but, all uh, I'm thinking is the next plan doesn't need to involve the cart. Just because it's there doesn't mean we need to start adding more carts yeah, already. Yeah. <laughs> Gal Galanis says, I know that y'all got the drive, and it's something that if I had more time, I could really... I could shape into something. I know it. I can see it in all of your eyes. But what I'm talking about is so dangerous, so, so damning, so bigger than all of us. It's, it's, we'd have to stop these terrible people from getting all this gold and doing absolutely wicked things with it. And the things that they will do to stop us, if they see our faces, if anything bad were to happen to any of y'all, I'd blame myself. <laughs> and I just can't go through that again. I got to figure out what to do with the chips I actually have in my hand. But I'll think about it, okay? But I got to get out of this city. I got to get out of it quickly. And maybe I'll be back and maybe I won't be. And, and y'all are just going to have to live with that. And he takes another swig from his flask and he slams it down on the table with the implication being that y'all can share it if you want to. And he turns around and he starts walking up towards the room. And as he does, he grabs his chest and he starts moving around this little pouch that he has there. And he breathes in deeply as if he's remembering something. And then he breathes out and he says, yeah, it's just, it's, and he looks at all of you with real concern in his eyes. And he says, it's just too dangerous. And he begins walking upstairs. Y'all are sitting Did around I... this table with the flask and your gold coins. What do you want to do? I was counting my gold. Did I get all 50 coins? You got all 50 coins. And the thing is, they're all shiny and new. They haven't been worn down, like, at all. They look freshly minted. All the details on the dragon are still there. Okay, well, seeing that I have all 50, and she just says, all right, wh whatever, Mr. G. Thank you for the gold. Good night, whatever. So, how did the heist go for you guys? Uh, and then, like, after, when he asked that, I'm, like, looking at the class. You know what? I'm just going to take a swig of it. It is fire wine whiskey. It burns your throat, and it warms your belly. Oh, that's good. Ugh. And what? That, so. um, yeah, I don't. Uh, like my character, uh, Blake, and he's like trying to figure out what next. Um, so it sounds like Galanis is only going to be in town for maybe half a day as he gets packed up and ready to go. Y'all can do something about that. Or you can let him be. Well, I mean, I'm just gonna... kind of brought on for easy money. Destry, you promised easy money. Quick heist, in and out, boatloads of money. And all I'm hearing is about how horribly dangerous everything's getting. I said money. You assumed quick and easy. You said, no, uh... no, I, I've got a parchment right here that says, join me, easiest money you'll ever make. Trust <laughs> me, bro. <laughs> Trust me, bro. <laughs> uh, no, if you actually read in the fine print right here, it actually says, may or may not include life-threatening danger that, you know, I cannot be held accountable for, given the fact that you yourself are an adult. So, you know, if shit goes sideways, it is not my fault in any way, shape, or form. Signed, Destry. 
Yes, so, but I mean, clearly right below it, it says, just kidding, and is signed with a crow's footprint. Yeah, when have you ever known me to use a crow's footprint? I've known you to use a crow for a lot of things. Wait, let me see that. You <laughs> son of a bitch! <laughs> oh yeah, I guess your crow. crow's in the room, too. Here's... Yeah, I'm gonna look at the crow, Ain't you I son a of a bitch! Stinker. Ain't I a stinker, boss? So now you know that it wasn't me who said that it was him. I mean, he works for you. The employer's responsible for his employees. Responsible, you upside the head. <laughs> <laughs> well, my point stands. What is the plan? Yeah, well, did uh, Mr. Hennessy... Good. Well, y'all know that Galanis did tell you what this big job was. You just can't remember it because of that blue stone. My biggest thing. A, yeah, we can't remember what he said because of said stone. Yeah. And two. Someone mentioned my uncle needs me. Which is not necessarily a good thing. So if he's going to be here for the next day and a half, potentially. Half before... a day. I mean, I still have the rest of the night to go and figure out what the fuck he wants. Did Mr. Galanisi, uh have a room for us again? Is that, yeah, is that paid the, up for? The same room. It is paid up for. Okay, I am going to take me a little nap, because I think I saw my intestines earlier, and I need to heal. Uh, but I I need to leave in the morning. I will be back uh, if you guys have a job that pays more gold. I, I Call me. I will be back here soon. But right now, I need a nap, and I will be gone in the morning. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, if you need healing, I can do that for you right here. Well, I... Yeah. But a nap would be nice. And those fish eggs. Where's Bonnie? So, uh... Um, okay. What were you gonna say, Destry? I was going to invite the party to come tag along with me while I go and figure out what the fuck uh, Mr. Uncle Man wants from me if they wish to tag along. Um, I remember we talked about this, uh, the last session. Uh, I don't need them to meet your family anymore. I was able to work the salesman into y'all being into the sewers, so I'm actually all good. Your call. All right. Um, it sounds like you want to get out of here soon, Destry, and introduce your new character. So let's not do that really. Soon. I I was just gonna. Bring tag them along for that, but I mean, if that's no longer needed, then I'll no, it's no, it's no longer needed. Uh, you going to see your uncle though, that will be your exit from this campaign because yeah. Destri or Brax wants to play a different character, uh, yeah, which yeah, is I'm fine. Pulling in a new character, okay. So, uh, Bonnie actually comes back and she brings out uh, a, a serving of fish eggs that she's divided up into five or six pieces, uh, when she notices Galanis isn't there anymore, and she she dumps his portion on your plate, and she serves it all to y'all. Uh, y'all can eat this, you can uh, order something to drink, like coffee, or you can start going up to the room. Uh, as you start to decide that, though, you hear a... <clears throat> coming from above you. Um, sir, what was that knocking and coughing? Sounded like someone dying. Bonnie looks up, uh, a little bit scared of the noise. I probably want to go upstairs and see what the fuck that is. Uh, with a mouthful of egg and fish, look up at Bonnie, said, What, what was that? Are you scared? Hmm? Um, and she, do you follow, follow your friends up the stairs? I'm asking Bonnie first. 
What did you ask her? What we got? Why your skirt? Hmm? <laughs> but with the mouth, that's with a mouthful of spo- uh, food. I'm saying, what was that? Why are you scared, Bonnie? Nothing should be able to come. Or nothing is crazy enough to ta- attack Dernan's bar. Anything, anything going wrong in here is a bad sign. Well, these are some good fish eggs. I will protect you, Bonnie, and I'll go check it out, and I'll be back soon. Okay, sweetheart. And I uh, hop down, shovel another food, uh, fistful of food in my mouth, and I follow the others upstairs, I guess. You just take your plate with you? Uh, I, I think I just take another fistful of food, which is most of the food on the plate, I guess. Okay. All right, y'all all start walking up the stairs, and you come to the room that you know as yours. Uh, when you're about 15 feet away from it in the hallway, um, there's a second floor to this map. I just I'm I don't have it loaded up right now, so we'll just say that this is y'all's room. When y'all come to the hallway outside of the room, you hear a dull thud uh, on the floor. Uh, you see that there is a candle lit in the room, so there is light shining from under the door. Uh, what do y'all do? Um, I'll, I'll get the party and be like, I mean, I, 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 you all want to your weapons? I'll open the door just in case something, you know, jumps out at us. Uh, blanket. How tall is Blinken? I'm a gnome. I'm about your your height, pretty much. Yeah, we got a gnome, okay. goblin, and a halfling, and a human and a elf. And a human. Well, then, I, I guess as Blinken yeah. says this, I cast disguise self on myself to look just like Blinken. I open the door and say, "What's going on in here?" Inchi, you open the door. And the first thing you notice is papers strewn all over the floor. You have no idea where these papers came from. They are marked in a handwriting in a language you can't understand. Some of them appear to be diagrams. Uh, some of them have words you recognize like Xanathar on them. The next thing you notice and everybody notices as in she opens the door wider is blood all over the floor and Galanis's dead body beside this table or Galanis laying down perfectly motionless by this table. You see nothing else in the room except for your cots, those papers, the blood, and Galanis. I did, did hear... Galanis. Oh yeah, go ahead. I just kick him. <laughs> All right. Well, it looks like... Uh... All right, Inchi, you walk up to him, and you kick him, and he does not respond. Uh, He appears to be dead. He is laying completely motionless. He is not breathing. As you kick him, his head rolls over, and his 10-gallon hat falls off. And you can see his eyes are wide, frozen, in the last expression he had, one of terror, a grimace of pain across his face, blood coming out of his mouth. that I would think something happened and she's reading his yep. pockets he's going through his um, pockets as you bend yep. down to go through his pockets you notice that they are already turned inside out as if something looked through them already you notice the left pocket is actually torn, as if something with claws grabbed it and drug it to try to pull it out. Ah, uh, damn it, there's no gold. You can't pay us more gold. We lost our money maker, guys. I'm gonna be right back. Um uh, y'all can roll perception checks on the body, the room. Uh you know there is a window in this room. Uh, there's also your possessions uh, that you would have kept in this room that you didn't have on. 
on your body. Okay. I don't know if it means much, but and she's more focused on uh, Glennis's body than the room. All right. Roll a perception check. Cool. Yep. With a 14, the thing that really stands out to you is Galanis's neck. Uh, you move the scarf that he has around his neck, and you see the little straps for that pouch that he keeps around his neck, uh, the one that he reached his whole arm into earlier today. But you also notice what killed him. Around his neck, already bruising, all the way completely around his neck, and his crushed uh, throat are the marks of chain, as if someone wrapped a chain tightly around his neck and pulled it very, very tight. Um, I want to look around um, and see if there's like any sort of, I don't know, claws or something that's to the window or something like it ran away and uh, maybe if I could determine if it's some type of creature or something um, you know, uh, roll an investigation check roll high roll high that's not high you notice that on the windowsill there appears to be claw marks facing outward, as if something with claws, something big, heavy, maybe the size of a human, maybe a little bit bigger, jumped out of this window while having claws. Um, and that is all you notice. Okay, so with, with the claws itself, I possibly roll like nature to de determine if it's like actually something I know? Like, yes. I'm a ranger? Yes. Do you have favorite enemies? Um, I do, yes. I just forgot what it is. Hold on, let me look. I don't have the... So, um, I think what I put was, um, uh, fuck, well, can't remember. I have to look at your character yourself. Um part of their hard drive. Alright, um, but yeah, I'll uh roll nature. Um yeah, if you could remember what they are and tell me, uh that might help you. Alright. We'll go with this nature check. I got a ten on with that. A, with a ten, you're looking at it, you're examining it. You notice that like there's five claw marks, but one of them is at an angle, as if something with four fingers and an opposable thumb put its hand on this window sill and pushed up and out. 